Lord. All right, welcome to Joy Christian Center from wherever you're watching us. May the Lord bless you and thank you for joining us. We trust God that you will be blessed. This afternoon, I try to round up our teaching, the series of teaching on biblical giving. And today my title is The Blessing of Generosity. And this will round up about 10 on giving. Um, you can always get the rest of the series on YouTube when you just type in Joy Christian Center Basildon or JCC Basildon, you'll be able to assess all the other recordings. Praise the Lord. Now, at the beginning of the series, we learned that God is the true owner and therefore the source of everything. Amen. God is the true owner and the source of everything. And as Christians, if we are going to practice giving, and if we want to be generous, then we need to understand this principle that God owns everything and he's the true source of everything. Amen. If we don't understand that, then being generous will be very difficult because we'll begin to feel that everything belongs to us. But the scripture teaches that we don't owe anything. We, are, we don't own anything. We are custodians. Amen. Of everything we have. That is, God has just given, it's on loan. God has given it to us on loan, you know, for the period that we live on this earth until we go home to be with our Heavenly Father. Everything we have is on loan. Praise the Lord. And in no place do we find this clearly stated than 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 10 to 18. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. First Chronicles in the Old Testament, chapter 29, verse 18. Let me give you a quick background. Of course, uh, David was praying here, the portion we are going to read. But before David prayed this prayer, the Lord had put it in his heart, or he had it in his heart to build a temple for God. And when he shared the idea with the, the prophet Nathan, Nathan said, that's a good idea. But later, the God, the God said to him, David, that no, you have shed so many blood. David was um, so much blood. David was somebody who fought a lot for God. And so God said, you've shed so much blood. So David, I want you to leave that for Solomon. Solomon will come and build the temple. And the Bible says that David being the kind of man he was, a man after God's own heart, he decided to you know, use all his uh, influence and everything to gather material and resources for Solomon to come and use to build the temple. So David gave, you know, gold and silver and so many things. And when he did that, the people of Israel also responded by giving. And they gave so overwhelmingly that David could not help but to pray this prayer. So let's, let's, let's read it. We are reading verse 10, 1 Chronicles chapter 29, 10 to 18. The Bible says, Then David praised the Lord, of course, in the presence of the whole assembly. O oh Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, that's Jacob, may you be praised forever and ever. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. O oh Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as one who is over all things. Wealth and honor comes from you alone. For you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hands. And at your discretion, people are made great and given strength. Oh, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you, and we give you only what you first gave. We are here for only a moment, visitors and strangers in the land as our ancestors were before us. Our days on earth are like a passing shadow, gone so soon without a trace. O oh Lord our God. Even this material we have gathered to build a temple to honor your holy name comes from you. It all belongs to you. I know, my God, that you examine our hearts and rejoice 
when you find integrity there. You know I have done all these with good motives. And I have watched your people offer their gifts willingly and joyously. O Lord, the God of our ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, make your people always want to obey you. See to it that their love for you never changes. And we are blessed by reading and doing what the word of God says. Let someone say amen. amen. So couched in this passage is the idea and principle that everything comes from God. And, and, and I, I love this verse because most of the time you may hear me praying over the offering and I'll say something like, Lord, we have given this to you because you first gave to us. It is important to know as a child of God and as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, it is so important for you to know that everything you have is from God. It's a gift. That should elicit praise and thanksgiving straight away from your heart. In other words, you should be somebody who is appreciative all the time because everything you have came from God. Praise the Lord. But he also says in verse, um, verse 16, he says, Oh, our Lord, even this material we have gathered to build a temple to honor your holy name comes from you. It all belongs to you. And 17 says, I know, my God, that you examine. Some translation says you test. You examine our hearts and rejoices when you find integrity there. You know I have done all these with good motives. Our giving should always flow from a good motive. Give, you know, because you love God. Give because you want to see the work of God prosper and thrive here on earth. Don't give because you want favor with the pastor. Don't give because you want somebody to see you and say how big your gift is. Give with good motive. Amen. Somebody say with me, everything I have comes from God. Amen. Now, as we talk about the blessing of generosity, I want us to look at three very important things that once we are able to practice these things, or if we get a hold of these three things, the blessings of God will flow in your life abundantly. Are you ready? The first one, if you want to walk in the blessing of God, if you want to walk in God's favor, we need to do this, these three things. Number one, we need to walk in humility. Somebody say humility. humility. That is, be a humble person. Number two, be a person of integrity. David said that you examine our hearts and you rejoice when you find integrity there. Be a person of integrity. In other words, be honest. Amen? Amen. Number three, be a generous giver. So humility, integrity, and generosity are the three things that once we get a hold of these things... We will walk in the blessing of God. No question. Don't get one and leave the rest. You need all three. Let's work on all three. Amen? Amen. Some people are humble, but they are not generous. Some people have integrity. I don't know how that works, but some people are men and women of integrity, but they are not generous. Neither are they humble. In fact, when you are a man of integrity or a woman of integrity, humility should, should be part of it. Amen. It should keep you humble. So we need humility, we need integrity, we need generosity to flow in the blessings of God. But what is generosity? Let's define that before we talk about the blessing of generosity. What is generosity? The IMAC Dictionary defines generosity as the quality of being kind and generous. The quality of being kind and generous. That's what it, 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 is, it says generosity is. But I believe that generosity... It's actually love expressed through giving. I repeat, generosity is love expressed through giving. Generosity is love in action. Amen. God is a God of love. How do we know that? John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. What did he give? His only begotten son. He gave him. So love 
Generosity is, you know, love expressed through giving. If you say to your wife, I can say to my wife, Agnes, I love you. You are my winter popo, you know, my pumpkin, my sugar, sugar, honey, honey, my darling. I can say that morning, noon, and night. If I don't actually give her anything, very soon she says, oh, shut up, my friend. <laughs> Why? Because my love is just words. There is nothing proving. Do you understand? And by giving, I'm not talking about just money. You know, you have to give. Like, you give money, presents, you give uh, the, mm, you know, the kisses, and all the things that are required of you as a husband. Uh -huh. You give your attention, you give your time, you give your heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh. Amen. You, you also give your support. Are there any men in the house? Mm. Talk to me, brothers. You also give your support. Amen. Oh. Amen. Mm -hmm. You do all these things. So generosity is expressed through giving, and it is love in action. Hallelujah. And when we, when we are generous, it is a wonderful thing. So right now I'm going to spend the next few moments that we have here to give you 12, 12 things that I believe spells out the blessings of generosity. 12 blessings of generosity. Number one. We honor God by being generous. In other words, generosity brings honor to God. When you are generous, it honors God. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 31. In the English Standard Version, the Bible says, Whoever oppresses a poor man insults his maker. But he who is generous to the needy honors him. Generosity brings honor to God. Amen. In fact, as I speak, right, I'm sure when you came in, you saw some boxes out there and with some provisions in there. These are collections we are, you know, we are taking to present to the resource center. The resource center is a place that some of the homeless people and the needy people in Basildon, they go there as well for some of their daily stuff like um, canned food or maybe they need toothbrush, toothpaste, and so on and so forth. So we are getting all kinds of things, uh, toothpaste for children, brush for children and adults, soap, um, cornflakes, what have you. We want to, I, I'm praying that we'll raise like five boxes. So far we have about three and a small one, but we want to, let's fill it to overflowing, amen? Let's practice generosity and let's bless their socks off. Hallelujah. When we give to the needy, we honor him. So number two, Second blessing of generosity. We draw closer to God by being generous. How does that work? When we give generously, it draws us closer to God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, NIV. The Bible says that for where your treasure is, there your heart will be. The way we leave this scripture is that where your heart is, there your treasure will be. But no, the Bible says that where your treasure is, in other words, your heart follows your treasure. We saw a movie a few days ago um, when my daughter turned 21. Um, some of the young ones in the church came and uh, they, they watched this movie. I don't remember the title, but basically the whole story was about a young mother whose young son was kidnapped. And my goodness, this woman chased the kidnappers all around America. Everywhere they could go. At one point, they were threatening to shoot her and everything. There was a moment she even took all her bag, her purse, threw it at the kidnappers and said, here, and this is my PIN number. If you want the money, take the money. But I want my child. You see, she treasures her child. She loves her son. So her heart followed the child. Where your treasure is, your heart will be there. If your treasure is in the house of God, your heart will follow. Amen. Treasure does not follow your heart. Your heart will follow the treasure. While I'm saying this, let me also say that this is why money, money is the only thing in life that can compete with Jesus for the lordship of your heart. Nothing else. Praise the Lord. Friends cannot do it like money. Spouses can't do it. It is money. If anything can compete for the throne in your heart, 
with Jesus, it's money. I said this morning to the uh, early service that, you know, if you really, really, really want to know your character, that's one of my points is coming. If you want to know, not you, your friend, if you want to know their character, give them a bit of money. Money, money. Just a little bit of money, you know, like 10,000. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm te oh, 1,000 wouldn't do. Some people are 1,000. Some people are so bad that even, even 500 will show. Because, brothers and sisters, money is a magnifier. Money is not evil. It's neutral, but it has the power to magnify whatever is in your heart. If you give an armed robber a million pounds, he won't stop stealing. He will invest it in the most sophisticated weapons and all kinds of security and continue robbing people because it will enlarge what's in his heart. He won't say, now I'm, million, I'm rich, I'll stop. No, 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 no. no. And yet give that same million to a mother like this lady, for example. Okay? And all you want to see, she's thinking about her children. You know how her children are going to have the best clothes and food to eat and place to sleep and da, da, da. because that is what is, is in the heart of a mother. Money will magnify whatever is in your heart. Praise God. So be careful. Number three. We become more like Jesus when we are generous. Generous generosity makes you more Christ-like. Amen? Amen. Hoarding doesn't make you Christ-like. Holding back doesn't make you Christ-like. When you are generous, it makes you more like Jesus. Proverbs 21, verse 26, New Living Translation. The Bible says that some people. Some people, thank God he didn't say all people. He says some people are always greedy for more. Some. But the godly loves to give. Luke 11 verse 41 says, in the NIV, it says that, But now, as for what is inside you, be generous to the poor, and everything will, will be clean for you. You know what that verse is saying? That generosity, okay, is a measure of our purity. That is the pureness of your heart will be measured by your generosity. How do you know somebody's got a pure heart? They are generous. But it says that some people, not everybody, so all of us here right now, if I apply this scripture, it says some of us. Somebody say not me. But the Bible says some of us, somebody say not me. I hope this is true. The Bible says some people, they are greedy for more. Amen. I, I don't have time to talk about those some people. Because, you know, some of those some people that the Bible is talking about, do you know them? Huh? These ones, they do morning cleaning, afternoon cleaning, evening cleaning, and in between. Cleaning all around the clock because they want more. I'm not saying doing more jobs is wrong, but I'm saying if there is greed in your heart and it's driving you to want more, be careful. Praise the Lord. I'm a firm believer that as a Christian, in fact, trust God to give you one very good job, and I mean a good one, with a lot of grace. That's all you need. Amen. Amen. Even the small job that you have, when the grace of God comes upon it, Amen. I mean, you will see God's glory. Amen. 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 That's what you need. You can get 10 jobs and work and, and not have the grace, my friend, and it will be what? Weariness to your bone. You can't sleep. I heard about a young guy from Africa, I won't call the country he came from. Amen. For security reasons. But this guy came, he was studying, and he was doing two jobs as well, and, you know, because things are tough back home. Long story short, one day, his friends didn't find him, and they went and knocked on his door, opened the door, and he was dead in his bed. Yeah. Because he was under pressure and working and working and working. He wasn't eating well. He wasn't sleeping because he's got to do all these things. So, I mean, why? Just get one good one. And ask God to give you a lot of grace. And you should be fine. Have I got, given you number three? Yes. Number four. Generosity is the cure for materialism. 
Generosity is what? The cure for materialism. Matthew 6, 24, English Standard Version says, You cannot serve God and money. 1 Timothy 6, 17 to 18. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Somebody say, God wants me to enjoy. That is why he has given us all things. Amen. But the Bible says that you and I cannot serve God and money. It didn't say you shouldn't. It says you can't, which means it is impossible to serve God and money. Praise God. You cannot serve God and money, but you can serve God with your money. Do you understand? Do I need to break it down? You see, when you are serving God and money, it means you are possessed by your possessions. It is not wrong to have possessions. The Bible says it in Timothy that God has given us everything freely to enjoy. Hallelujah. Just acknowledge the source. Know where it comes from. Enjoy it whilst you have it. Praise the Lord. But don't let your possession possess you. To the point that you have so many stuff that now you haven't got time for, for anybody. Like I was saying last week, you know, you get all you can and then you can all you get and then you sit on the can. Don't forget, the longer you sit on the can, your own body temperature will warm the can and it will soon explode on your bum. <laughs> you got it? So that's not what the Bible is saying. Generosity cures materialism. When you are generous, it is very difficult for a generous person to be materialistic because generosity will break the hold of materialism. Some, I think it was sometime last year or two years ago, the guy who created Minecraft, that children's uh, uh, program and stuff like that, he... he he made so much money. He bought a big house with swimming pool and everything. I mean, his house is huge. Swimming pool and everything. He got all the cars. and He went on holiday, you know, all by himself. Went to, I think it was uh, Ibiza or something like that. Had fun, you know, danced and did And after that, he was back. And, and then he, he was on CNN. He said he was bored. He was bored. He's not happy and stuff. The guy was rich. You know, the kind of... Richness that you and I are really praying and fasting for. You know, he got it. He, he got so much stuff. He's got money. And he said he was not happy. And thank God, when they interviewed guys like Bill Gates and stuff, they said our advice to him is that he should stand giving it away. Every multimillionaire has learned the secret that after you have gotten all that you can, you can't scan it. You have to share it. Because if you don't, materialism will get a hold of you. Amen. Amen. And although you will have all the money and all the goodies, you won't be happy. Need I remind you, it was just recently, I think last Thursday or so, Pastor David was saying, Pastor, do you know Michael Jackson died now 10 years ago? I said, what? 10 years. To me, it's all like yesterday. Because it's so fresh in my mind. What didn't that man have? It was when he died that some of us discovered that the man couldn't even sleep. That sleep had escaped him. He had everything. Money. How did he get it? All he needed to do is... And that's it. Millions will come. He used his talent. And millions came. But what he did sacrifice for that? One of the basic things that you and I take for granted, sleep. He couldn't sleep. The guy was even using medicines that they used to sedate people to operate them. Now, painkillers couldn't even work anymore. He has to go to the next level. You know? And that was what killed him. Praise God. Generosity 
vacuous materialism. When you get it, give it away. Oh, by the way, if you are waiting to get a lot of money before you start giving, trust me, you won't. Start doing it now. Now that you have pennies, learn to share your pennies. When you get the millions, you would have developed the habit. You would have developed the attitude. It becomes easy. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You see, if you have not given when you have a pound, my friend, when you get 10 pounds, it will look so big in your eyes that one pound, hey, if anybody comes near your pound, you shoot them. But if you have learned to give, when the big money comes, it's not a problem. You can give equally and you won't feel it because it's become your nature, your attitude. Hallelujah. Generosity number five demonstrates my faith. Wow. That nice book in the New Testament called, some people say Philemon, okay, Philemon. Chapter one, verse six in the New Living Translation reads, this is Paul talking to Philemon and he says, and Philemon was a very wealthy man, okay? But he has a slave called Onesiphorus and this slave ran away. And in one of Paul's uh, imprisonment, he actually, a uh, missionary journey or whatever, he, he came into contact uh, with Onesiphorus and led Onesiphorus to Christ. Then he discovered that this guy was a slave and he has run away from his master. So Paul then wrote to Philemon asking him that, look, I've met this guy, now he's saved and he's coming back to you. Okay? But don't just accept him as your slave, now accept him as your brother. And in writing that, look at what Paul said. He said, Philemon 1.6 Paul says, I am praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith as you understand and experience all the good things we have in Christ. So generosity demonstrates your faith. When you are generous, you are saying that I am trusting God alone to meet my needs. Amen. When people hold back from God, they are saying that I don't think anybody is going to meet my needs. So let me, let me you know, keep it for myself. When you can't, after you have gotten all you can, and you can all you have gotten, and you sit on it, it will explode by and by. <laughs> all right. Number six, all right? Generosity reveals my character. I've mentioned this already, but let me say it again because it's worth saying. Generosity, number six, reveals my character. Say it with me. Generosity, Generosity. reveals my character. God uses money, ladies and gentlemen, to test what's inside you. Okay? God will use money to test what's inside you. What is in your heart? Like I said, if you want to know what's in your friend's heart, give them money. If you don't have the money to give them, here is another nice little test you can run to, show, to see what is in your friend's heart. Go to um, Enterprise, the car rental company. Yeah? And rent yourself a very nice, brand new 2019 plate. Either an Audi, BMW, or a Mercedes, you know, one of these three. In fact, go for BMW. Black guys love, love that. Okay, nice one. And then make sure it is washed, polish it, dress it, find some suit, you know, wear it nicely. And uh, come to church. As my daughter will say, that they make sure you come fashionably late. So everybody will see you walking in. Eh? They see you when you pack your shine, shine BMW. It's not yours. You are just running a test. Mm -hmm. And then you walk to church. Here is the test. Anybody who comes to you asking for a lift, they are your friends. The ones who stay afar and say, hmm, is that your car? <laughs> Something is happening in their heart. Already. Generosity reveals my character. Luke chapter 16, verse 11 to 12. The New International Version says, So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, wealth who will trust you with true riches. And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? Can I spend a few minutes on this one? 
Because sometimes I have seen the attitude of Christians, and excuse me to say, sometimes it stinks. We all have this attitude where they say, you know, uh, in, in, in broken English, you say, master no day, boy day. You know, in English, it's similar to the mice will play when the cats are not around. So, for example, our general attitude is that when the boss is not there, when the pastor is not there, when the supervisor is not there, when mommy is not there and daddy is not there, it's our game. We do whatever we like. We don't care. Once they come, we behave. And so sometimes this attitude is reflected even on the job we do, that we are not faithful in somebody else's business. So you go, somebody has employed you and he pays you, and you go to work late, and if God doesn't intervene, when somebody is actually not, is not looking over your shoulders, you don't actually do your work. You play on your phone, you go on uh, Facebook, and you send your postings and see all your friends chat and whatsoever. Okay? And then when they come, you quickly switch over and you go back to the new, uh, this thing, your desktop as if you are working. I know what I'm talking about because I've done it before. When I used to work in the NHS. When the boss is not there, you know, anything goes. But thank God the Holy Spirit put a check in my spirit with this verse. If you have not been faithful in another man's, who will trust you with your own? My friend, it is when you treat somebody like yours that you are moving to possession. Praise the Lord. Because most of the time, the very thing you are trusting God for he will test you with a small amount of it. I'm serious. You want to be a businesswoman? God will then put you to work with a businessman or a businesswoman. And he will be watching how faithful you are in that person's business. When you are faithful, God will give you yours. Sometimes he may even cause that same business person to hand over to you. Their business or to empower you to start your own. But when you are not faithful, my friend, you don't get your own. You might even lose the little that you have. Praise the Lord. So, generosity reveals my character. Number seven, generosity brings God's blessing. We know this, don't we? We know this, don't we? Okay, Proverbs 29 22 verse 9, Proverbs 22 verse 9 in the NIV, the Bible says this, the generous will themselves be blessed. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. For they share their food with the poor. The generous will be blessed for they share their food with the poor. My friend, if you are generous, you will know. Do you know one way you can find out if you are generous? Here in JCC. Let me help you. On your birthday, huh? on your birthday, count the number of birthday cards you received. Amen. You see, a giver, if you are a giver, somebody will also give to you. If we are friendly, then on your birthday, WhatsApp will go crazy with well wishes from all over the place and stuff like that. When the platform is very silent, uh, either we don't know your birthday, or you, have, you haven't been really generous. Praise the Lord. Now, I don't think it's because I'm a pastor. It's because I made sure that I made noise about my birthday. So on my birthday, I get lots of greetings and cards. And, amen. I'm that type. I'll tell you because I'm an extrovert. Amen. If nobody said happy birthday to me, trust in me, I'll come to church. I'll sing to myself. I will. But sometimes you have to be crazy. I'll say, happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. I'll sing it because you can't stop me. But, but listen, generosity brings God blessings. When you are generous, you tap into the blessing of God. Amen. Because most of the time, the blessings that God brings our way, my friend, it doesn't fall from the sky. God uses people like yourself, like myself, to bring blessing. That is why it's important for us to be nice to people. Not just nice, but let's be kind. Nice is, is worldly, okay? Be kind, not just nice. 
<coughs> because somebody can be nice to you and it's not from the heart. Haven't you seen them in the workplace? They see you and they give you that mechanical smile. You know, it's just the movement of a cheek muscle. Mm. And that's it. Turn around and they start talking about you. We want some people who will show genuine, you know, love from their hearts and, and, and will love us. Second scripture for number seven. Generosity brings God's blessing. Second Corinthians 9, 8. Please memorize this. New Living Translation says, And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. It says, and God will generously provide all you need. Amen. Amen. Did you notice the word need there? It didn't say God will provide what you want, but what you need. You see, needs deals with basic necessity. Want is excess. Praise the Lord. And God says he will provide all that you need. Not what you want, but what you need. The things that will make you live life and be, appreciated and be happy and be satisfied. God says he will supply that when you are generous. Somebody say, bless me with generosity, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. The eighth thing, generosity increases my happiness. Ooh, a generous person is a happy person. Yes. Amen. Acts 20.35. I have shown you in this very way by laboring like this. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. You see, one way you can also practice generosity is you, you got to work. Amen? Amen? Somebody say work. 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 By laboring like this, mm, that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. A generous person. Generosity will increase your happiness. I mean, I, I'm always happy when I know I've, I've done something good for somebody. In fact, when I preach well, I am happy. When I feel I haven't preached well, I'm not happy. Amen. Amen. And you know I'm generous with my preaching. I'm very generous, I tell you. <laughs> last Friday I came to talk to the youth and we went home and Edinam said, so that, how do you feel about it? I said, well, I think it was good. He said, yeah, but it went a bit okay because it went a bit over because we are not used to. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize, you know, I spoke to them for two hours. Whoa. I just opened up. I said, look, let's talk. We're talking about the Holy Ghost and ask questions. Ask questions. And before I realized, two hours is gone. Being generous. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> <clears throat> So generosity will increase your happiness. When you are generous, you will be happy. A generous person will never lack. Trust me. Hallelujah. Amen. Because as soon as somebody hears that this person is in this particular situation, somebody somewhere Amen. will come out. Sometimes it's not even somebody you have been generous That's to. They will just come out and say, here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. They say, here. I've got this all. Yeah, you can have it. And it works all the time. Praise the Lord. I remember years ago, I was believing God for a car. And uh, one lady, friend of ours, family friend, her husband had an X5. And he called me and he said, Pastor Widu, I'm trying to get rid of my car. And I've thought about, you know, and I thought, come and take it and uh, pay me whenever you want. Anytime. I prayed about the whole thing. I said, hey, brother, thank you very much. That's a generous offer. Can I get back to you? I prayed about the whole thing, and I said, now, nah, I'm not a, a BMW type of guy. I, from, from a childhood, I've always said that I'm going to drive a Mac. So I said, no. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Otherwise, he would have given me that X5, and, and he said, you know, anything you want, and whenever you want, you can pay me. It's like, take the car for free. Somebody says, ah, pastor, I should have taken it and sold it. No, 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 that's not fair. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I couldn't take advantage of somebody's generosity like that. But they were being generous. I never expected that from them. Amen. But later on, you know, the Lord provided. So generosity will increase your happiness. Generosity, number nine, makes you influential. Do you want to be influential? 
Be generous. Amen. I'm not talking about manipulation. I'm talking about having influence. Look at Psalm 129 verse 9. Sorry, Psalm 112 verse 9. Am I seeing well? Yes. Psalm 112 verse 9. It says this, they share freely, that is the righteous, and give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and honor. That is Psalm 112 verse 9 in the New Living Translation. They will have influence and honor. If you want to be influential, my friend, don't go about bullying people. Just be generous with them. And with generosity, we are not just talking about money or anything. You can Time, talent. Praise the Lord. And your gifts and money. Be generous. Hallelujah. Sometimes there are certain people you don't need to give them anything. You give them what we call the ministry of presence. Hey, bro, how are you? I just want to come and spend maybe a couple of hours with you just to hang out. You know, you don't need to give me food or anything. I just want to hang out with you. You know, what's up? What's going on? What are you doing? What are you up to? So how are things and stuff like that? And you encourage them. That's all. Job's friends they actually gave him what we call ministry of presence. In his time of need, when they came and they sat with him the first three days, none of them said a word. Why? None of them said a word. You see, let me not digress, but let me give you this little uh, bonus, okay? When, when you study the Hebrew and you look at the Hebrew language, it's a very rich language and most of the time, the way they've translated the scriptures into English, it hasn't really done justice to the Hebrew. Because the Hebrew is, uh, I don't know how to describe it. You know, one word could have three, four, five different meaning depending on the context and the use of that word. Do you understand? So when Job's friend came, Eliphaz, Bildad, and, uh, uh, and the, who, who's the, the other one? Okay. When the three guys came, you know, there's a Ghanaian among them. <laughs> huh? there's, a, there's a Ghanaian among them, uh, Eliphaz. The Bible says he's from Teman. Okay, that's the post city in, in Ghana. <laughs> yeah. And if you read about Eliphaz, if you, if you look at his behavior, the way he talks, like Ghanaian, very typical. All right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why they didn't say anything was because their names were speaking. For three days, they said nothing. They just sat there. Because one of them, I think it was uh, Eliphaz or something like that, he, his name means God is my judge. So he sat there with Job and said nothing. And all his presence was saying to Job, God is your judge. Sometimes you need to check out the meaning of their names. Praise God. People didn't just name people anyhow in the Old Testament. You know, what's your child's name? Sashi. <laughs> to make you influential. Ten, generosity multiplies your money. Do I need to explain this? This is not lottery. I hope you don't play. Because I prayed in this church about ten years ago. That anybody who plays the lottery, including me, you won't win. <laughs> Period. But pastor, we need money to buy the church building. I know. The Bible also says that whatever is not of faith is sin. Lottery, by definition, is a game of chance. Amen. Oh. And, and oh, by the way, if you study the Bible again, and I learned this from a book titled um, uh, Business Secret from the Bible. It was written by a Jewish rabbi. And he said one problem with the English language that they don't have in Judaism or as Jews is that in Hebrew, there is no word for win. Winning, uh, um, when it comes to money, there is, there's no winning, okay? The only, there is only one word that is associated with money in Hebrew, and it is to earn. Yeah? The Hebrew has no concept of winning money. 
everything about money is earning. Is it, is it any wonder you find that any time you see a Jew, either they work very closely with money or they control money? Have you noticed that? They don't run around playing the lottery. Because it's not, that concept is not in their language. So it has shaped their thoughts. But in English, we have winning. So sometimes people want to win money. Now, when you alone win millions, just remember that a million people have lost one pound to you. Or two pounds to you. Winner takes all. 999 people lost everything. Okay, that's my little sermon on, on, on the lottery. Trust God. Work and earn money. Amen. Amen. And, and it, when it multiplies like that, you can enjoy it. By the way, read about all those who won the lottery. How many of them have been able to expand with their winning? Very few. About 90% or let's say 99% of lottery winners Within the first five years, they are back to square one. Why? They have not learned and been disciplined to handle that level of wealth. So once they get it, money is a magnifier. Every desire in their hearts, boom! Somebody who will never buy apple from Harold's. Now that he's won the lottery, he doesn't just buy apple from Harold's. He now eats breakfast at Harold's. Go and eat breakfast. You know, up, one apple in Harold costs about five pounds. Now, with that five, if you go to Lidl, I won't say more. <laughs> you, buy, you buy a whole shelf. It's up to you. Number 11. Generosity brings God's protection. Psalm 112 again, verse 5 to 7. It says, good comes, good comes to those who lend money generously and conduct their business fairly. Good comes to those who lend money. Do you see another concept again? This one, the Hebrew is flowing here. To those who what? Lend money. What? Generously. generously. In other words, they lend the money interest free. And they conduct their what? They conduct their business fairly. Such people will not be overcome by evil. Those who are righteous will be long remembered. Somebody say, that's me. He said, they do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. This morning, I was telling the first service that I heard about this church in India. They started about 13 years ago, and the church has grown. There are thousands of them. And India being uh, predominantly... Hindu nation, you know, the church has been a target. The government has tried to take the church down, you know, to sort of stop them, but they have never been able to, you know. Do you know why? Because the pastor, God bless him, they have built hospitals where all the poor people who can't afford to go to hospital, the doctors in the church would treat them free of charge. When they have their own, the church has its own cemetery. When their people die, they bury them. They look after the poor. And they are running different projects in the community for the people. Do you understand? So including those who are Hindus in the area, the church is blessing them. So when the government say, hey, the people will say, eh-eh. Uh -uh. <laughs> All right. You know, in Africa, we have certain expressions that... You can't write, but it's part of our language, okay? Um, one of them is, eh? You understand that? Oh, we do it. Ghana, Nigeria, it's everywhere. It's even in Kenya, Africa, everywhere, okay? Eh? And there are three forms of that. When they say, eh, it means, like, what do you mean? When they say, eh? <laughs> it's like, is that so? This, eh that is exactly <laughs> <laughs> our language is blessed too. So sometimes there are certain things you don't have to say. You say eh. <laughs> and the person understands what you are saying. You know? So when the government says they want to touch this, the members will say, eh. It's like theirs. <laughs> and the church, the church has survived in a place like India. Just because of their generosity into the community. 
Church, can we borrow this idea? Amen. And do it. Let's do something in this community that will catch the attention of the council so that they will come and say, listen, the government has given us this money and we think you are the only church, in fact, you are the only people who can do this, so here is the money. Just do, do, do exactly what you're doing, but here is money. It is possible. Praise the Lord. My last point. I'm doing well. My last point. Generosity, number 12, will be rewarded in heaven. Did I give you the scripture for number 11? Yes. Number 12, generosity will be rewarded in heaven. Luke 16, verse 9. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it's gone, you will be welcome into eternal dwellings. Use what? Worldly wealth. The King James will say worldly riches. To gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone, that is the wealth, you will be welcome into eternal dwelling. This is what it means. The way we use our money as Christians should bring people to salvation in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Question. Is the way we use our money making people go to heaven? That's the question we need to ask. Is the way we use our money making people go to heaven? Because generosity will be rewarded in heaven. How? You see, when you have given to that missionary, to that evangelist who will lead souls to Christ, what the Bible is saying is that you will meet eternal friends in heaven who will come and say, Brother, thank you for that 50 pounds you gave for that mission. It was as a result of that 50 pounds I am here today. Thank you. Your generosity will be rewarded in heaven. But notice that there are some benefits that we will reap whilst we are on this earth. For example, it says that generosity will multiply your money or will increase your money. Amen? You have your reward in heaven, but you need the kashito here. Like last week I was telling you, anointing destroy yokes, okay? And anointing does some things. But anointing won't buy a car. Anointing won't build a house. Amen. Oh. We need physical materials to do those things. And we have to have a right understanding and a right balance of these things. Christians are running around, by the anointing, Jesus' name, by the anointing. By the, my friend, uh, if you like, come right now. I can pour the rest of the olive oil I have in the bottle on your head and anoint you and see if you'll be able to go and buy a Mercedes. With that anointing, it ain't going to work. Amen. But if you have the means, and I pray for you, you get fever, and then you go and get the right color of the car you wanted. You understand what I'm trying to say? You see, when you study the life of Samson, would you say that Samson was anointed? Huh? Talk to me. Was Samson anointed? Okay. What did Samson do with his anointing? Sorry? He beats people. Something never opened a blind eye. He never raised the dead. He just went about beating people. No, no, read the scriptures. I'm making it 21st century, but exactly that's what he did. He just goes to the Philistines, pick up a fight, and he whips them. Anything he finds, the slightest, the jawbone of an axe, eh? a, a, a donkey or something like that was dead years ago. Something found the jawbone, and he used that to destroy a whole army. That was the anointing. He didn't raise one dead person. So, so the anointing comes on specific people for specific functions. So if my anointing is to preach, yours may be to make money. And when you make the money, then you have to remember those of us who preach. That's what the Bible says in Galatians. You understand? I'm talking to you. <laughs> And, and, and you, and, and, and you, and all of you, I'm talking to you, then you remember us. It's high time we stop this thing. Pastor, God bless you. Ah, this man is a faithful man. Oh, he can preach. It's a good thing. But how many of you have seen pastors uh, eating God bless you? 
Praise the Lord. The Bible says that, Psalm 126 verse 6, the Bible says, this is a promise, and I love this. We're going to pray. And I want us to pray with this. The Bible says, Psalm 126 verse 6, the Bible says, He who continually goes forth, weeping, bearing seeds for sowing, shall doubtless, shall doubtless, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Hallelujah. Sowing is not easy. To learn to be generous is not easy. But there is a reward for generosity. That if you don't give up, you will reap. Hallelujah. So church, let us learn to be generous. And our generosity should not be one direction. Yeah, hey, pastor says we should be generous. Then all the time you bring the money generously to church. God bless you. But how about that uh, homeless per person, that you know, needy neighbor that you just walk past? Remember them too. Let's be generous to them. The Bible says in the morning sow your seed, and in the evening withhold not your hand, for you don't know which will sprout, whether one or the other or both will sprout together. Amen? He who sows sparingly will reap what? Sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. Praise the Lord. Oh, I am so glad I finished this thing on giving. Next week, we start talking about the habit of a disciple, which is the habit of witnessing. Okay? We've talked about the habit of prayer, talked about the habit, uh, the habit of studying the word, the habit of prayer, the habit of fellowship, the habit of giving. This has taken 10 weeks or so. And the reason it took 10 weeks was because I just wanted to deal with this tithing issue. Amen. And I'm sure you understand it. Let's rise up. Let's rise up and pray.